Come on, Nick. I'm not an idiot here. Yeah, you can have one. Only one. I got this easy job. Um, I don't mind it really. It's uh, putting these, what I'm carrying here. They're called openers, <clears throat> points. Um, the end of uh, what we call the boot. Anyway, it's what opens the ground up and allows the seed to be placed in a band. And these are three and a quarter. And so let me drop these down. I missed my foot, that's good. And uh, these are what they are. They're, they're um, right here. They're uh, expensive. They're $120 a piece. Um, but they're special in the fact that they're a high grade abrasive uh, steel composite, but they are have sweated on on the faces. If you look at that, okay, that's carbide. And carbide is very um, resistant to abrasive. So we'll put these on at 120 and there are 77 of them on an air drill. So you can do the math and it adds up to some bucks. There's over $13,000 that we're doing between the two air drills. But they'll last about three years, at least, probably something like that. And then that way uh, it stays this uniform shape during that whole period of time. Um, but anyway, we drew straws and I got this job, great. The others, they had to man the coffee machine. These are the openers and uh, the front here, this nose, nose to nose, is uh, where you put those points or openers on. But these boots do wear and there's the opening for the seed to fall through. But what happens is that as the soil sliding past the face of it, it uh, wears. And eventually they get very thin and then they open up and then mud falls in there and plugs the opener. And then you've got a plug run. And so anyway, these are fairly expensive, but they're rebuildable. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to take this used plowshare shovel uh, and I'm going to cut the wing off. I'm going to put a section right here. I'm going to weld a section in here to build back up this thin opening, right? So I'll just lay that there, weld it. We've, we've done that to others and increased the life of them uh, another whole life. Uh, not quite as many as a cat, but probably two or three lives. And then, uh, then face, we'll add a, I'll add a little more weld right here to the nose of it to build that up so to protect it from keep cupping in into the front of the boot. And then that makes these boots usable again. So uh, you gotta cut the wings off and get welding. Okay, that'll provide a, a wear point uh, to keep that without uh, having the soil cup it like this and weaken this area. So that one's ready for another 10,000 acres. This toolbar is 2000, that's the year. Well, there's a lot of hydraulic hoses that are just seeping and making a mess of everything, oozing all over. So I'm gonna start taking off hydraulic hoses and cripping new hoses and uh, fixing this nasty disaster. Okay, let's get to work.
So here's the thing that we're doing. Since I still kind of have a broken arm, I gotta be careful what I'm doing. For me to take two wrenches and break the hydraulic lines is probably not the smartest move in case if I happen to slip and try to put my arm on something, I could break it, damage it. It's just not worth it. Nick's busy in there, so I got my pops in there, which I feel bad that he has to do this. But anyways, he's taking off hydraulic lines. I'm going over, cutting them, crimping them, bringing them back, he installs them. And it is an oily mess in there. And I'll show you how many lines we've taken off so far. And there's still a lot to go. But here's a few lines right here. Yeah, it was overdue. I mean, what do you expect? The year 2000 and it's 21 so far, so that's 21 years. Yeah, I can do math, right? <sighs> Just an oily, greasy, nasty mess. All right. All right, he's grabbing, or he's letting me grab the hose so I can take it. It is an oily mess. And I'm gonna go make four of these because we need to do two on one side and two on the other side, and they're all the same length. So, my process, lay it down on the ground, make sure it gets extra dirty. My hand just got extra dirty. And then I'll take a tape measure, measure that, and then measure a new hose, chop it, and so vice versa. So yeah, should be good. Guys, I did an oopsie. It's not something I'm proud of and I don't want to talk about it, but I need to talk about it because you're gonna find out. Using this case steer to... I'm blaming his half useful arm. I'm really upset He's right He's learning now. how to use a cyborg arm. It hasn't fully kicked in yet. Cut him some slack, guys. Cut him some slack. I own this, it was my bad. So I was pushing the cart back because we need to weld something on there and I was watching where the tires were going. I thought it was just about good and I almost about to stop and then all of a sudden I forgot about the auger which damaged the shop. Fantastic. Okay, it doesn't look like the auger's hurt so far but it's just like one of those things that I did not want to do right now and I just did. Uh, this rear tire of the Air drill was flat, so took it off. We had to pull it over here and come off the rim and knocked a bunch of mud in. So we're gonna patch it. I see a, I think I see a nail in it. Um, so I think there's one, so that means I got a hole in one. Huh. No plaque though. Um, anyway, so I gotta, I washed the tire off here and uh, also the rim, it was all muddy. And so I got to dry it off. There's a little bit of water left in it. Dry it up and I'll put it into the uh, tire checker, rotate it around, find that uh, nail. I see it's poking in, patch that and then we'll mount it. So, and then when I get done, one of these is going to be tired. Important things, gotta have that. Um, anyway, so I took, the, cleaned the tire up and dried it off and I'm gonna show you what's in there. It's either a six, 10 or a 16, number 16 nail. I'm gonna pull that out, patch it, and then uh, put some flat free air in there. Uh, and then uh, we'll put it back on and gradually getting the drills together. Hook up the 600 bud to the 4350 air cart.
This air drill that we had bought, um, whoever assembled it, not for us, some, for somebody else, and then we bought it used, um, actually put it together incorrectly as far as each one of these distribution towers you see here. Okay. Yeah, it's got uh, eight of them on this drill and uh, the manifolds. Anyway, there's eight, there's nine and ten runs on each uh, one. one. Some might be nine, some might be ten. And they switched the two for some odd reason. They put the nine on the end and the ten on the next side, inside on both, both ends. Well, what that did is that these things fold right here as as they uh, go through the field and also in transport well it caused that one to have to run over around the hinge and then back around well when you fold it up there's a pinch point and then the tube would uh, crease and kink and then it would stop the flow when you went back uh, let it back down again and then also it's a longer run so there takes more air to get to that one and there wasn't enough air for product so anyway what I'm doing is I'm taking that tower, that manifold tower, the 9, and replacing it with the 10, and the 10 is coming back over here. So i got to unhook all the things, the blocking system, the intelligent ad blocking system. Awesome. Just awesome. Uh, but that uh, will have to be essentially re-hooked up because um, it's only going to have um, 9 on that one instead of 10, and this one's going to have 10 instead of what it thinks is nine and it's real simple you just go up in the cab and reprogram the uh your ipad uh to recognize which how many on each one and which one they're plugged into all right well we're getting close here we've got the carts hooked up to the drills and we're hooking the hoses up the only problem is when we put that new manifold on here we had to cut the hoses off the old manifold which meant the hoses are now shorter which means now they're not long enough to attach to the cart or to the drill. So I'm gonna take some exhaust tubing and I'm gonna cut little six inch extensions, slip them inside of there and then uh, hose clamp it up and then I'll get the extension I need to attach to the drills. And then these hoses are themselves are about shot. See our little patches everywhere. Every one of these that makes this 90 degree bend right here are all patched and leaking and have issues. So we're gonna go through, we have a little bit of a roll of hose we're gonna put in some splices in between and all around, see if we can get a little more life out of what's there. And then get this drill ready to go. A couple tires, all those ones I did earlier. Yeah, we're putting them on this already. <laughs> Flats all over it. So we're, uh, we're getting that done. So I'll have to make some more spares. But we're getting close. Leg Arms is working on the tractor and dad's changing a manifold around. So yeah, progress. 7140 needs a little bit of uh, new shoes. Like some new shoes on it, right? Because the back one and the front ones are all shot. We took, well, I didn't take. We got a tire guy out here. He took these off. These are all cracking. It's got tubes in it. He went in town to see if he can get some tubes for it. We need to put a back tire on. But here's the dilemma. This front tire over here is actually got, they've welded everything up inside here because it's been breaking out. Whoever it was, I don't know who it was, but they are welding it. This used to carry around big bales and those front tires take a lot of abuse. So this front one has not been welded. I really should put a bead all the way around or sections of it so it doesn't break out. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Let's take the welder and weld it all up. That way it'll be secure and we won't have it breaking out in the future. Okay, let's weld. While he's down there well my rim, I'm going up top. This track is light, for lack of better words, stink. And I've got a pile of Thomas lights that I need to put on some stuff. So I'm gonna try and see if I can put a couple on here, just so that way we get in the nighttime operations. This thing keep going. I just got the hook to the cab loose, so I'm gonna lift it up, get in there, start hooking these old lights, plug some new ones in and see what happens. So I had a little bit of black paint and since I welded all that up, it's gonna rust and I threw black paint on it and I got it on the nice 
scratched shiny silver stuff. So it's not pretty, but we're gonna get some mud on there. And uh, you won't even notice the difference. But it's all welded up, ain't gonna come apart. If it does come apart, we have other problems. Oh, it's one less thing to think about. Thought we were done hauling grain, didn't you? Actually, no. I'm gonna haul some barley for the first time in my entire life. Never hauled barley before. But this isn't for selling. This is for buying. We're buying barley from a friend of ours to use as seed this year because the price of feed barley is supposed to be pretty good. So our goal is to put a lot of acres in a feed barley. And I am just shifting my left hand. One second, guys. Hang on. There it is, found it, okay. But anyways, back. So our goal is we're gonna put in a bunch of barley acres this year on land that normally would be kept fallow, which is gonna be more crop acres, which goes into our largest farm year we've ever had, which could be a boom or a bust, but hopefully a boom. <laughs> now, the cool part about it is though, barley is really easy to grow for feed. We don't have to worry about protein on it because they don't want high protein. We just want yield. All we want to do is maximize yield. It's easy to harvest, easy to handle, easy to clean. So I'm gonna go take this truck. I already got the International 9370 over there. And uh, let's go get some barley. There she is, waiting to be taken home. Find out where they want this truck parked and then get this one filled up with some barley and uh, I'll come pick it up tomorrow. Now, there's a couple more hydraulic fittings that need to be changed out, which is actually on the cart. We're gonna take a couple lines off, take them in, crimp new lines, bring them out, put it back on. We got a couple leaky things. And for the most part, this cart is basically done. There's a few minor things to just kind of tweak on that over there. And then we just need to put a battery in it and run the meters, make sure everything looks good, runs good. And for the most part, this rig is kind of ready to go. So with all those fittings we need, they came today, which is awesome. I ordered them online. We, well, I got what I wanted and then I had my dad order them. Yes, my father does everything for me. That's okay though. I like being a millennial-ish. Anyways, Got this big roll of 3 8 hose and a bunch of fittings in here. Close to $700 worth of fittings and hose. Yep, sucks. But you gotta do what you gotta do. Otherwise, it's kind of useless. So I'm gonna go ahead, make sure we got everything we need, which I think we do, and then I uh, can crimp hoses. Okay, here we go. Is there any barley in this thing? Oh yeah. There we are. Let's get this home. I'm pretty excited about feed barley this year. I just got this feeling, this feeling that this is gonna be the year we've been waiting for for the last 15, 20 years. The year. I'm gonna get the rain, I'm gonna get the bushels, I'm gonna get the price. And then we're gonna pay off some land debt. We're gonna upgrade some machinery and build a giant swimming pool. After doing a little digging in our inventory, I had a, of course, an odd number, these Thomas LEDs. Three of these HP4s and then one oval and then one other five HP5 oval. And well, these don't fit in the front, but they fit in the back. So I'm gonna put two back here. And then I went ahead and ordered a couple more ovals so I'm gonna put them in the front. So they'll be a week or two out. But when it's said and done, this thing should have good light for now. It's lights were pretty bad. So this will really help light up the field in case we're in a pinch and gotta do some night hours. So I'm gonna put these in real quick. Won't take long. Success, it's bright, old, kind of can see it, new, old, new, wait, new, there's old, new, old, new, isn't that amazing? Yeah, it's gonna make a big difference. And actually this side, there was only one light working on the whole back of this tractor. We've gotten them working over the years, but the, just the connections in the back just keep coming apart. 
This one's still not working. I don't really care because the amount of light that that little thing is kicking out is nothing compared to what these are. The only downside is there's not a lot of room in there for those HP 4s. So it kind of is pointing down a little bit, which is okay because it lights such an area. Those are 60 degrees. So they illuminate a large area. I think it'll be 10 times greater than we've had in the front, but we'll get there. So I got to button up the front of this thing for now because I got it apart and I don't have the lights here to put in it. So I'll get to that when I'm at it. They didn't finish through the tires yet because they need another tube to finish that front one. So when they get that all done, Magnum is ready for, ready for the Bradster, the Wiggly Wagster. You guys know Wagster. Brad, he's ready to roll, literally. All right, finally, the parts showed up. So now we can start assembling this thing back together again. Took a few days to source the stuff, but we got them all. So I'm gonna start putting the new shoes on and then Leg Arms is gonna come in and he's gonna start helping us put the wheel seals in and the bearings and everything. And we'll hopefully get this assembled, get the wheels back on, get this jacked up and put back down so it can come out and then we can put the tank on it. And there's a lot of work to do to the booms on it, but we're getting there. But yeah, I'm, uh, I can do the brakes. So let's put some shoes on. There's not chunks missing and there's pad. Fantastic. Next step. So far it looks like we got the right parts. We have our brake pads, we have our bearings, we have our seals. Everything seems to match up correctly. Um, we just kind of pulled it out and inspected, make sure that we're not putting it on and finding out it's wrong. So anyways, what we gotta do is now install for our bearings, where the bearings go, is right here. There's one on the inside, one on the outside, so that way it carries. So now I'm gonna reinstall my Reese's. It's race, you knuckle dragger. Hey. Nick, it's Reese's. Come on, Nick. I'm not an idiot here. Yeah, you can have one. Only one. Oh. Uh. <laughs> we ran into a snag. The outer wheel bearings are too, they're out of the wrong number, too small inner diameter. So uh, somehow they sourced us the wrong ones. So the time it's gonna take to get new ones means this won't be done until next week. And it is Wednesday. So we got them on order. They'll be here, hopefully Monday, and we'll uh, get them fixed. We're gonna go ahead and put the other hub assembly together, get the other brakes on, get it that far in, and then uh, cover it up like this and get back to it in a few days. So uh, sorry guys, Big Brute's not gonna be driving for a little bit. Okay, we're not we're not quite there yet to rush to the field. Still got time. Six eight four six two. That's what we need. Well, we were really hoping to get the brood out of that side of the shop, so that way we could use that bay for the buds because we've got some upgrades coming to the series two, series three, and some other things on the farm. Some sweet upgrades. You guys are gonna really enjoy it. So, but we gotta get them possibly in here, and we're not sure if our series two fits in this side of the shop that well. We'll find out, but if we can get it in here, then it can be worked on because it'd be really nice to have it warm. It's supposed to be only 36 degrees Fahrenheit tomorrow. And the guy that's coming to work on it, we'd probably prefer to be inside where it's a little warmer. So let's go start it up. Okay. 